followers of Jesus show us many things. I mean, certainly for me as an evangelist, I'm always reminded of the fact that actually the gospel is supernatural. I'm not asking people to accept some philosophy or tick off a set of beliefs or adopt some particular uh, set of practices. But actually there's a supernatural God who wants to change our lives. The danger is, I think, though, that we can become so focused on the signs rather than who they're pointing to. The miracles become more important than the message. And I believe that God is calling us to recognize that miracles point us to Jesus, but it's the relationship with Jesus that is more important. Very truly, I tell you, you are looking for me, not because you saw the signs I performed, but because you ate the loaves and had your fill. People are still like that today. Even when they've had a miracle, they don't actually believe that Jesus can. Uh, Jesus is the Son of God, or we should believe in Him. We want to follow Him. We can actually get out what we want of Him, and then just follow our own ways again. Very truly, I tell you, all who have faith in me will do the works I have been doing, and they will do even greater things than these, because I am going to the Father and I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. I remember getting a letter from a girl who'd actually become a Christian through my ministry some years before, and, and she had been taught this idea that uh, she was now going to be doing greater things than Jesus and couldn't wait for something more spectacular. I think she thought if Jesus walked on water, she was going to walk on steam. Uh, but the reality is actually the Bible talks about greater being more significant in terms of coming into life relationship with God. In, in John chapter 5, Jesus himself talks about the greater things are about God giving life. And you see that in the transition from Jesus' ministry to the ministry of the Holy Spirit through the, uh, through the early church. The end of Jesus' ministry, there was a small band of dispirited followers hiding in a room. And uh, then when the Holy Spirit came, the great thing on the day of Pentecost, 3,000 people became Christians that day. Well, sometimes we can copy the way he does things. Um, for example, one day the disciples came to him with a problem. They'd been healing and preaching all day and there were 5,000 people. It was late in the evening and they hadn't got anything to eat. So they said, we should send them off to get, the disciples said to Jesus, we should send them off to get food. And he said, you give them something to eat. Well, I think the disciples must have panicked. You know, what was he saying? How could they? And then what he does is that he breaks bread and fish and he, there's a miracle. But it's a miracle that happens quietly. And then he says to the disciples, you sort the people out into groups, you take the food to them. Um, and I suspect that most people thought the disciples had brought the food. They got the gratitude. And they got the sort of, the, the job to do of, of giving out all this food. And then afterwards when they swept it all up, they realized what a miracle had been because there were lots left over. And in a way, you see, he didn't use his power and he didn't use his superiority to say, da-da, when he made it a miracle. It was quiet. And he allowed the disciples to do all that they could do and possibly to take the, the praise for it. And in a way, I think that's the way we should lead. We should allow people to experiment. We should give people opportunities to use their potential. We shouldn't um, boss people with our power. We should be quiet, authoritative, but quiet, gentle leaders.